Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. In today's show, a low cost way to convert cars into hybrids, General Motors launches a bike sharing program and a look back to the 1939 Snow Cruiser. But now to the news. China wants to put a lot of muscle behind electric cars. Bloomberg reports that China is thinking about spending $16 billion on EV charging stations. And that, folks, is a huge commitment to growing the EV market. Our back-of-the-envelope calculations suggest that could buy nearly half a million Level 3 charging stations. According to the research company Ibis World, there are 99,000 gasoline stations in China. And we expect to hear an official announcement from Chinese authorities any day now. In other EV news, Volkswagen announced the price of its electric Golf in the U.S. market. It's priced at $35,445. That's about $5,500 more than a Nissan Leaf, but is only slightly more than a Chevy Volt or a Ford Focus EV. Speaking of going green, GM is starting a bike sharing program for its employees at its gigantic tech center in Warren, Michigan. GM is partnering with a bike sharing company called Zagster. The bikes will be locked at solar powered stations across the 330 acre campus. Employees will download an app that will provide codes to unlock the bikes. GM says that riding bikes are a healthy and convenient alternative to walking, driving, or using a shuttle to get to meetings at all the different buildings spread across that campus. The Ford F-150 is the best-selling pickup in the U.S., but Consumer Reports says it's not the best truck that you can buy. Instead, it crowned the Ram Eco Diesel as the best light-duty pickup in the market. The truck not only achieved better fuel economy than Ford's and GM's trucks, it also outperformed its competitors in other road tests. The diesel version of the Ram costs about $3,000 more than a comparable Hemi 1500 version, but Consumer Reports did not factor that into its evaluations. Recently, China began investigating and even fining car makers for overcharging on spare car parts. Now India is doing the same thing. 14 automakers have been fined a combined $420 million over antitrust violations with spare parts. Automakers must now sell spare parts and diagnostic tools to independent repair shops and honor warranties of cars repaired at those shops. You know, with China and India cracking down, we expect to see other countries cracking down on this issue. Hatches, hatches, get your hot hatches here! Sales of Ford's Focus and Fiesta ST models are going so well that the automaker is dialing up production. And they don't sit on dealer lots very long. Focus STs are snatched up in 15 days. Fiesta STs are gone in 30. While we are seeing more super high horsepower cars like the Hellcat from Dodge or even the Corvette Z06, Looks like there's still growth to be had at the lower end of the performance spectrum. And now it's time for another trip in the Wayback Machine. Have you ever seen anything like this before? This monstrous vehicle was built for U.S. Admiral Richard Byrd and one of his Antarctic expeditions in 1939. Officially called the Snow Cruiser, it was powered by two 150 horsepower Cummins diesels it carried a crew of four with a kitchen, sleeping quarters, and a machine shop. It even carried a small airplane on top. Cummins and Inland Steel, which sponsored the project, even ran full-page advertisements about it back in 1939. But it never worked out as planned and was abandoned in Antarctica, where it eventually disappeared under piles of snow and ice. Reportedly, it was rediscovered in 1958, but then got covered up and has never been seen since. Hey, coming up next, American Axle is coming out with a very clever way to convert front-wheel drive cars into all-wheel drive cars at the same time it converts them into a hybrid. 
Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. Automakers will increasingly need to provide some amount of electrification to their cars if they ever hope to meet stringent emission standards in North America, Europe, and Asia. And that's why American Axle is coming out with a clever way to convert front-wheel drive cars into all-wheel drive cars. At the same time, it converts them into a hybrid. American Axle first started developing the system with Saab, but took over the whole project when the Swedish automaker went bankrupt. The system can use any front-wheel drive vehicle, to which they add a rear axle with an electric motor, and then hook up a battery pack. With both systems engaged, the car operates in all-wheel drive. And what a difference all-wheel drive makes when accelerating in the snow. The system also provides torque vectoring, which makes steering in snowy conditions a lot easier. American Axle calls this EAAM, and it can operate as a front-wheel drive car, as a four-wheel drive car, as a hybrid, or operate in pure EV mode. It's a clever solution and probably cheaper than other electrification approaches. David Dow, CEO of American Axle, tells AutoLine that Koros, the Chinese-Israeli automaker, will be the first to use it in late 2016, but he says other automakers are definitely interested. Hey, be sure to join us for AutoLine After Hours. Our guest is Larry Nitz from GM Powertrain. If you want to get the latest insider info at where GM is headed with its engines and transmissions, join us this Thursday night. Anyway, that wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.